Bet you didn't think someone will ask about Robotrek. Well, people have asked about that game before, but yeah, it's pretty rare someone asking about Robotrek. I couldn't get into it, to be honest. I think it's a good game, but it's like Pokemon with robots. I mean, all you gotta do is go and build little robots, train them, have them fight. And the battle system, while unique and interesting, you know, it kind of had an upside down to it. Uh, it had a downside to it. Uh, it's um, It can be kind of slow. And it can be kind of unfair sometimes. It's a good game, but I'm not really the biggest fan of Robotrek, but I do recommend it. Thank you, Radioactive Cosmic Race. Most anticipated upcoming JRPG in 2024. Metaphor for me. Or you mean Metaphor fa Re Fantasio? Uh, a Youth and Chronicle for me. <laughs> if you ever want to try an alternative to Pokemon, I recommend Cassette Beasts. Cassette Beasts? What a name. Cassette Beasts? I mean, what? I, know, I gotta look it up now. Cassette? Does it have something to do with cassettes? Like tapes? Cassette Beasts. This is, oh, this is on Switch, Xbox One. Wow. Xbox Series X. Project X Cloud. GNU, Linux, Microsoft Windows. Not, not on PlayStation, apparently. At least it's on Switch. Okay, yeah, it looks like a Pokemon clone. The battle system is like, okay, side by side. Looks interesting. I'm not gonna play this, obviously, but... It looks cool. Pokemon fans will probably dig it. Developed by Byten Studio. Okay, looks interesting, man. Have you ever played Contact on the Nintendo DS? A long, long time ago, and I never went back to it. I remember playing that game when I made the uh, most obscure JRPGs on the Nintendo DS trilogy and the Hidden Gems videos. And uh, I don't remember much of it, you know, I, I never went back to it for some reason. I've only talked about that game like once or twice in my entire YouTube career. I, re I don't really know much about it. All I know is that, it, I mean, you got this screen with the doctor, with the scientist in at uh, base. And you control this guy in an action in RPG, kind of like top-down view in the other screen. It's kind of like that. I, I thought it was okay, unique, but okay, like there was nothing that appealing for me personally. Xeno Gears or Story or Suicide than 2 in terms of story. Well, both of them have really good stories. I think Xeno Gears, Xeno Gears is the best story ever written in a JRPG of all time, period. Period. <laughs> Nothing can surpass it, not even my beloved Chrono Cross. I mean, Xeno Gears, the story is like the best thing ever. Right? Suikoden 2 is a fantastic story, but doesn't come even close, man. Not even close. Problem with problem with Sweet Sino Gears is that it's very outdated. <laughs> the camera, the uh, the controls, the exploration, the random encounters, you know, it's it's just very outdated. The battle system aged decently. At least the one with the uh, sprites. Because you know you got these other battle battles with the mechs. And they're giant mechs, and they, the polygons are starting to look very fucking ugly. But the, the 2D sprites in the regular human battle system, you know, oh, man, they look beautiful, and the battle system is amazing. But yeah, the exploration in Xeno Gears is what aged poorly. Very poorly. Xeno Gears on a Xenoblade take, will you play it? Uh, no. No, I wouldn't. Maybe I will. Maybe I would when it's like ten dollars, right? I wouldn't support that. Don't fucking do that, man. And don't Tetsuya Takahashi. Don't do that. If you ever remake Xeno Gears, make it the proper. We make it fucking turn-based. The battle system is amazing. Wasn't I just saying that the battle system is amazing? It's untouchable, man. You shouldn't touch a combat like that. Which overarching arc? Overarching arc? Is stronger for you the crossbell arc 
or the Cold Steel Arc. I picked the, the, the Cold Steel Arc simply because I like it more, even though what, what was special about the Crossbell Arc in the Trail series is that it was kind of like more on the mature side of things. I mean, you got these characters, you know, fighting the Mafia and fi fighting gang streets, and there was some drug and, and some weapon, illegal weapon. I mean, it, it had some mature themes and some realistic themes. In fact, uh, Trails from Zero, the remaster, got an 18 rating in some countries, in some areas, you know. I think in, in North America, it got the... Uh, I think in the US and Canada got the teen rating. I, I think in Mexico we got the 18 rating, which is the mature rating. So uh, precisely because of those themes. That's what I like about it because the approach in, in Crossbell was a little bit more on the dark side of things, on the mature side of things, and a more realistic side to it. Of course, after a while it got, goes bonkers with fantasy and science fiction and whatnot, like any other Trails games. Uh, but it's, it's a really good approach. But in the end, I think I like the characters and their situations and their development a little bit more in Cold Steel. And plus, we are putting, it's kind of unfair, but we are putting four games versus two games. Or two and a half, if we count Reverie. Four and a half versus two and a half. So we got more story, more development. Uh, we we bond with the characters in Cold Steel a little bit more because simply because they got more games and some of the games are longer long as fuck 3 and 4 are long as hell 60 hour plus at the bare minimum even if you just focus on the story so I don't know in how they got all the crossbell and all the sky arcs together for Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4 you know I thought that was fantastic you know how this is the game that brought all the series together, all of them. Because Crossbell only did something with Trails in the Sky in the first game. So yeah, uh, they're both fantastic, man. But I think I am leaning more towards the Cold Steel arc for the aforementioned reasons. Xenogears might be good if they did the HD 2D. Yeah, I strongly agree with that statement. Strongly agree with it. Fix the camera, fix the navigation, remove the random encounters, please. Star Ocean did. There are no random encounters in Star Ocean, the second story remake. You can see the enemies and choose to ignore them if you want to. And it isn't hard to run away from them, unless they're pretty close in a crowded space. Uh, unless that, you can just ignore the enemies if you want to. I love that about the Star Ocean 2 remake, so Xeno Gears should follow the same example, the same formula. What's your second favorite genre after RPG? That will be fighting games. Definitely fighting games or... Yeah, fighting games. <laughs> it sucks that Trails 1 and 2 are not available on Switch. Oh, you're a big Switch guy, I know that. Yum, yum. <laughs> yeah, they are in Japan, though. <laughs> not here. I don't, I don't know why they didn't bring them over on the Switch. It's kind of dumb. It sucks, you're right. What do you mean, okay, okay, you're saying just wish they would have done better distribution of the, the exposition in the Crossbell arc? Do you mean that because the original versions never came out of Japan? We never got them until recently? Or what do you mean by better distribution of the exposition? What's your hype meter on a 1 to 10 scale of for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Ooh, Final Fantasy fanboy alert! Uh, 5? Like, I care. I want to play it. But I'm not really that excited for it. 5. Trails from Zero has, like, nearly no exposition. Exposition in terms of what? That's what that's what I'm trying to ask you. And then Trails to Ashu is 90% 90, 90 of the entire exposition of the arc. Oh yeah. You mean... I don't know what you mean, man, by that. Same guy asking of Soul Calibur guy or Tekken guy. How about neither? <laughs> I don't like either. But I guess I like a little bit more Soul Calibur because of the girls. I mean, come on! <laughs> yeah. 
But that's my argument. I mean, I like Soul Calibur over Tekken because of the girls. I mean, there are some pretty eye candy on, on Tekken, I know that, but Soul Calibur, sort of, I mean, whoa! Holy shit, man, they go nuts with the fan service in Soul Calibur. But gameplay-wise, I don't care for either. I am planning on getting the Super Mario RPG remake. Maybe not on launch, but at some point. Or maybe on launch, I don't know. No, the first game, like the first game, very little of the story. This, oh, there. That's what you mean by exposure. Yeah, everything, it all comes together in Trails to Azure. In fact, I've seen some people saying that Trails from Zero is, is its own game, its own thing. Ah, right? So, okay, I get what you mean now. I don't exactly, I don't exactly disagree with that statement, but. Asher wouldn't exist without Zero, so one game is... I mean, I just don't see them as separate games, man. I see them as the same game, just cut into two parts, released separately, but it's the same game, it's one game. That's my take. Uh, Trails into Reverie had a lot of copy and paste from Trails to Azure and Cold Steel. Yeah, it's that, that game is pretty much a love letter to fans of both, of the entire series. And I love it. Gameplay wise, in terms of gameplay alone, I think it's the best Trails game. Story, it's a bit unfair to judge it because it's it's just a follow-up, it's just a closure game. Uh, but I think the story was phenomenal in Reverie. It's just, it's just I think the, the closure in Cold Steel 4 was so epic that nothing comes close. Trails in the Sky second chapter, the same. It was just so epic that, I mean, Reverie doesn't hold a candle, but um, I, I really do like the story in Reverie and how it comes. It's kind of senseless near the end. It goes batshit crazy with a lot of weird shenanigans, but uh, I like it. I dig it. Final Fantasy VII Remake has the best battle system in the entire franchise. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did play the Ark Odyssey. Is that the game you're asking, or is AC Odyssey another game? If you're asking about Ark Odyssey, Arcus Odyssey, that's the name, Arcus Odyssey, on the Genesis, right? Uh, it's more on the arcade side of things. I think it's a really good game, but it's, it's pretty hard. <laughs> but AC Odyssey, I've never heard of that game. Lost Odyssey, however, yes, I did play it back in the day. And I fucking loved it. Masterpiece, Lost Odyssey. Love the heck out of that game, man. The second best JRPG on the Xbox 360. Hands down. You know what? I can't disagree with that. Cold Steel 1 and 2 do a lot of uh, do that a lot better. I think it's the other way around. I found that Cold Steel 1, the first one, I think it's very slow. All these military high school simulation, you know. I found that very slow, and Zero isn't slow at all, in my opinion, it's just, it's, it's, it starts off better. I think Zero is a better game than Cold Steel 1, but Cold Steel overall is a better arc than Crossbell, in my opinion. I like it more. Uh, speaking of Trails, who has the balls to name a game Trails Through the Daybreak? <laughs> we already talked and ranted about that the last in the last two streams. Yeah, it's um, it's a bad name in my opinion, but it was pretty divisive. I made a poll last time, and a lot of people voted that it was a good name. Half of it, it was a tie. The last remnant, I played the original version on the 360, and no oh man, I got far into it near the end of the first disc. That's that's a two disc game. I made it all the way to the uh, set to the to the first disc. And there was a boss battle that you needed to finish in order to switch to the second disc. Never got past that boss battle. And I went back and grinded like an idiot because you're not supposed to grind in that game. And I only made the battle worse. Fuck that boss battle, man. The Last Remnant is such an unbalanced mess of a video game. I don't think it's a good game. Ethel, Ethel of Xenoblade. Catalina of Grand Blue. Velvet of Berseria or Kisara of Arise? Okay, I'm I'm picking Ber Velvet. 
of course. I love her personality, I love her hatred, her revenge idea, her edginess. I love her, man. I just fucking love her. Out of that group, though, the rest of the girls you mentioned are pretty similar. Ethel, Catalina, and Kisara. They're pretty similar uh, characters. The uh, badass, a little bit more mature woman type of character, you know? And Kisara and Catalina are armored. Uh, yeah, and they look like they're both brown haired ladies. If I had to choose between those three, though, I will pick Ethel. What do you think about DQ games? I'm a fan of the Dragon Quest series. I'm not the biggest fan out there, but I'm a fan nonetheless. Uh, 8 and 11 are my favorites. 7 was pretty good too. Enchanted Arms Burn or Keep. Keep it, man! That's a good game! I think it's a bit underrated. It gets a lot of undeserved hate. Enchanted Arms is a really good game. It's not wow! It's not gonna blow you away. But it's a good game, man. Keep it. Do you think we'll get Valkyria Chronicles 5? At some point, I haven't given up on Sega. I know it's been a while and we've got nothing, you know, but I... Uh, Valkyria Chronicles 4 sold uh, over a million copies. But this is as of June 2020. It is revealed that Sega, by Sega, that over 1 million copies of Valkyria Chronicles 4 across all platforms have been sold worldwide. And that was three... Almost three and a half years ago, man. So imagine. I don't think it has surpassed the two million dollar copies. Otherwise, it will say that it will say so. But um, maybe a million and a half. So I think Valkyria Chronicles 4 was successful enough to warrant a sequel. When are we gonna get that sequel? I don't know. I have no idea. But I I think I'm positive. I'm optimistic. I'm positive we'll get Valkyria Chronicles 5 at some point. Fucking hell, I'm a big fan of it, man. I love it. I love the series. I'm a diehard fan of the series. I've enjoyed every single one of them. Big fan of Valkyria Revolution 2. What went wrong with Blue Dragon? Let me tell you what I think went wrong with the game. Barely anything went wrong with it. But I think uh, three things ruined the, the game and the franchise. It's a franchise, in case you didn't know. There's an anime. And there are two sequels on the Nintendo DS. The first major problem with Blue Dragon, exclusive to the Xbox 360. Like, okay, that right there, we're off to a bad start. Number two, the game was very, very hyped. It was supposed to be the big comeback from uh, Hironobu Sakaguchi. Like, like, he had just quit Square Enix and that was his first big game, so he made it. And honestly, it turned out to be a good turn-based RPG, but it was just too similar to Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, in a sense. The game is its own thing, but the fact that you can summon dragons and attack and whatnot, I mean, it's pretty good. But it just wasn't the masterpiece everybody was expecting it to be. Sure, the game had a lot of charm, which was exactly what Hironobu Sakaguchi was aiming for. But it also had a lot of generic themes to it. And the story and the characters, you know, and the battle mechanics and everything about it wasn't that great. So I think the game suffered from being just overhyped. And it just let a lot of people down. It didn't let me down, though. You know, but yeah, it's no masterpiece. And the third problem is what I just mentioned, that they wanted to make the, the game a big thing. And so what do they do? They release an anime, which was pretty successful, especially in Japan. But where did they go from there? To the Nintendo DS. Like, the Nintendo DS is a great console, yeah. But why would you release a sequel from an Xbox 360 game on a Nintendo DS, exclusive to the DS? And not only that, the final nail in the coffin, man. The second game was a real-time strategy RPG, and it's kind of bad, to be honest. And then they, they tried to redeem themselves with an action RPG now. 
Awakened Shadow, on the, also on the Nintendo DS. And it was better, it's a good game, but again, if your first game was turn-based, why did you change the battle mechanics in the two follow-ups? Exclusive to the DS! So that's what went wrong with Blue Dragon. Is there any DS open world RPG available? Yeah, I don't know because I'm not a fan of open world RPGs, but I feel like there's gotta be one in there. Here's one that's not exactly open world, but you get a lot of freedom and it's an action RPG, pretty obscure, it's called Avalon Code. The story is not exactly linear in that game. It's a bit open, yeah, but not really at the same time. I can't think of any right now apart from that one. That's that's as close I can get. Top RPG boss you enjoyed fighting? I've never done that, you know, I've never done a video. I've always wanted to do a video on my favorite boss battles. The one that I did though was called Top 10 Epic Boss Battles in JRPGs and it was supposed to become a series but everybody was bitching about the spoilers, because there were a lot of spoiler battles in that video. So, I, yeah. Ah, the series died, and it became a standalone video, and it failed. Uh, check it out if you can, some of my all-time favorite boss battles are in there. Because there's just... They're, they're very epic. Do you accept video requests? Yeah, it's not, not that I accept requests, it's more like if you have an idea, and I think the idea is pretty good, I'll do it. I've taken a lot of ideas from my chat in these Q&As and a lot of them have been turned into videos. But the one favor that I'm going to ask you is don't come here asking me to do the same video other JRPG channels already do, because that happens a lot. And I've done that same mistake in the past, like I thought it was an original idea and I made it and it turned out other JRPG channels already did it. So I'm going to ask you not to do that. But if you have something original that you haven't seen anyone doing, you know, give me a shot. Uh, give it a shot, man. Do you like Gran Turismo? No. I don't really like racing games. I like karting games. But racing games? I don't... I'm not really into them. Maybe I like one or two and that's it. But not really a fan. You will probably make a nice Super Bosses video, though. Me? What makes you say that? I think I fought like five super bosses in my entire life. I don't. I usually don't fight super bosses. I play the the one on Valkyrie Profile Two, uh, the the uh, the Ethereal Queen. I play the same bitch on Radiata Stories. I fought against her, and I beat her once. I got the super boss, the secret boss in Super Mario RPG with the Final Fantasy IV music. Love that boss fight, but it's so fucking hard. I fought one of the super bosses in Shin Megami Tensei 5 and Devil Survivor. I don't think I can make it a, a top 10, man. Maybe top 5 with those guys. 